Today we're back looking at some more entitled people. Neil Tech shuts down Karen. We doing a full set today? Yes. And and girl, you set. bite your fingernails? Oh man, it's terrible. But instead of this shape that we normally do here, okay. I want to do that fan where it fans out. I, I want a real wide fan. So you, want, you want square? Square? No, I want the fan. You want the duck nail? Yes. Honey, that's ugly. No, it's not. No. But that's what I, I want. No, 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 no I've. I, I won't lie, I don't know what type of shape that is. It's ugly, honey. Well, maybe that's why I didn't come to you last time. Oh. Yeah, it's not my specialty. No. If you want that shape, you're going to go to another salon because I don't do that shape. Julie, you can do anything. I don't want to. That's ugly. It doesn't matter. I'm a customer and I get what I want. I know. You get what you want somewhere that's else, right. but yeah. not here. All right, fine. Now, I'm picky fine. on what I do. If fine. I don't like it, I'm not going to do it. That's what you'll do a good job. It'll no, make, it'll, no, no. It'll fan my beach no, scene out. Not... It'll, it'll look like a beach. More beachy on my nail. No, no, it looked like a duck. No, no duck I feet. want that. I think no, they're cool looking. No, that's ugly. You no, need no, 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 I want it. Just do it. I'm here. I, look, I'm here. No, honey. Just I, do I, it. That's not my special. I'm telling you, if it's ugly, you, I'm not going to do it. If you've never done it, then don't. I mean, she it. is the nail tech. you got to listen to her. You don't know how to do it. That's why. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. That's ugly. Because you don't know how. I know. I don't no, know don't how. Know I'm how. sorry. I don't know that's how to do that. Yeah, maybe you should go back to school. Okay, so in the comments section, a lot of people were saying that that video was fake. However, it could actually be real. That could just be a reenactment. I've seen a lot of videos coming from nail salons of customers acting like that. Like, I feel bad for the wee people doing the nails. You are the customer, you can get what you want in another place. Ha ha ha. I feel like that should be said a lot more. You know, whenever you see videos of people getting kicked out of stores, usually for stuff that they've done, they're like, oh, I'm never gonna shop here again. What the colleague should say is, okay, then don't come back. You're not wanted. Go to another store. This screams fake to me. Okay, so a lot of people are saying that, hence why I thought it was a recreation but yet again we've seen entitled people in nail salons like they are crazy when you had to work late so everyone else should too it looks a bit we're reading a one star review i had to stay late at work due to taking care of a customer but i needed to return some items at a store in the mall drove over 30 minutes to get there and arrived at the door at 7 58 the store was still open it was a few steps from the entrance but a guy with a mop insisted the mall was closed and said i couldn't come in i even showed him the time my apple watch when it wasn't eight yet but he said their clock said it was after eight and that security would just kick me out if i came in between the apple store jc penny and a restaurant or two i only spent a few thousand a year at the mall but i guess i can shop online or eat somewhere else from now on yet again it's another situation where the customer's in the wrong but they say they're gonna boycott that business is it really gonna make a difference you know if you just go to other shops like another apple store it's not really gonna affect them is the money still going back to apple literally none of those stores cares about their few thousand of dollars a year and neither does the mall nothing of value was lost here i can guarantee you she'll boycott them for about a week or two and then go back because she realizes oh god it's actually quite difficult to boycott and just because you were in work late doesn't mean that that store has to stay open for you. I've seen so many videos online where people literally go in the shops at like 7.59 when the shops went to close at 8. And that's probably why the mall was locked. They probably lock it a few minutes early just so people like you can't get in. It's going to take them way more than two minutes to even get where they need in the mall. So why are they even trying to get in? They said they were returning a few items, weren't they? If I were a cashier in that situation, I'd just say the tills are locked and I don't know how to unlock them. You have to come back tomorrow. But then to be fair, the vibes that I'm getting from that reviewer is that they would demand someone to come to the store to open the tills just so that you can serve them. All because they put ice in her drink. Is someone in the cars or are they driving off? A little context about that clip that I didn't tell you at the start was basically she asked for a drink with no ice and I accidentally put ice in. It's an easy mistake made. What you do is say to them, hey, I ordered a drink without ice. Could you replace this? What you don't do is get out of the car like her. Like, look, she gets out of the car and everything. And then the car just starts to roll away. And yet again, squaring up the drive free staff. Like, is it really worth the bother? I'm guessing drunk. Honestly, with some of these people, you can't tell if they're born that way, drunk and on drugs. And in most cases, it's all of them. I will never have any empathy for people who give fast food staff a hard time. I'm sure there's a special place in hell for these people. Getting mad because of ice in a drink is weird AF. I can understand if you're annoyed if you ordered a drink without ice and they gave you ice. The easiest way to solve that issue is to say, hey, I ordered a drink without ice and I've been given ice. Could you change it or give me a refund or blah? blah 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 like that is the easiest thing to do what you shouldn't do is what she done you know getting out of your car and everything and then her car drove off and probably crashed and had to spend thousands fixing it am i the a-hole for telling my dad and his wife that they are not entitled to a say in the decision making of other adults even if they raise those adults my dad's 62 and his wife 59 mary got married 16 years ago both were wedded with children dad had me my sister and my other sister mary had jess her son and her other daughter dad and mary wanted to make a nuclear family and a more traditional family where mary would stay at home and be the mum to all of us and dad 
dad would be the dad to all of us and work and be less involved in the day-to-day -day child care parent. I never accepted Mary as my parent. I never called her mom. I resent her deeply for asking frequently when I was a child. Jess never accepted my dad either. She feels the same about him that I do about Mary. My sisters called Mary mama because they call our mom mom. Jess' younger siblings called dad dad. Jess and I never considered a soul family. We both missed our late parents and would cause chaos by bringing them up sometimes to put the step parent slash parent spouse in their place and remind them that they weren't forgotten. I'd do this with dad too and I'd remind him my mom wasn't replaceable and her place in my life could never be filled by anyone else. I am low contact with dad and Mary now. Jess had a baby in the last two years. She named her daughter after her dad. This upset my dad and Mary. I found out about this little over a month ago because my wife and I had a son and his name was my mum's middle name which she was known as by close friends and family. Mary was hurt that I honoured one grandmother over the other. But why though? Why is that an issue? Yet again I feel like this is one of them weird family dynamics where it's kind of like a cult family. Have you ever came across them families where like they're obviously a very tight and you know lovable family but it's kind of like a cult in a way where like the parents dictate everything and they kind of control all the kids. I'm getting them types of vibes. My dad also told me I should have found some way to honour Mary. Maybe using her maiden name etc. But why? Why do you need to honour her? This is your child like name your child whatever you want to. They have not met my son and I did not reach out to them. They reached out to me. They told me Jess doing the same was such an intentional snub against her family and them as parents. Mary told me I should have reached out to her and checked if my decision was okay with her. I should not have included her and dad in this. Dad said the same. I pointed out they're hardly in my life anymore which is how I preferred so I'd never include them. I ignored calls and texts for a few more weeks until Friday. Mary told me this was not how someone treats their mother. I responded that she was never my mother. She was never my real mother. She died when I was still a child. I told her claiming she is what part of what made me so distant from them. They both decided to FaceTime me that night and told me I'd made such a big and hurtful decision without discussing it with them. But Jess had done the same and they rambled on like that. I told them they're not entitled to a say in decision making of adults even if they've raised them. I told them Jess and I do not need their permission and we clearly don't care what they want. I was called rude, entitled and grateful for having such loving parents. Am I the a-hole? No. Like it's really quite simple. You know, put it this way. I am big in protecting children. Most parents keep their eyes out for their children. However, sometimes parents can be a bit too controlling. And I feel like that's the situation you find yourself in. The parents still want to control you as if you're a child and dictate how you should live your life. And then yet again, it's your own child. Like imagine being told what you should name your child. I don't think so. Not the a-hole. They are major a-holes for expecting their kids to just forget about their dead parents so they can play happy family. That's what I'm thinking. Like obviously it's awful that they've lost their partners. However, you have to keep in mind their kids have also lost their parents. And they're acting like that. Not the a-hole at all good for you going low contact. Just curious, do you and Jess and or other step siblings have relationships? I wonder if you two maybe had a bond over not playing along with your dad and Mary's scheme. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if they do because by the sounds of it, it is kind of like a bit of a cult. Obviously not like a serious cult, but kind of like a cult family where mommy and daddy have to dictate everything and then all the kids bond over their dislike for it. But all I'm going to say is that if these parents want to die lonely together, they better change their ways because that's the way they're going. Woman gets upset she isn't getting GoFundMe donations for her needs fast enough. I wish I didn't make GoFundMe account because I just checked to see how much I have so far and it's still not much. I mean, I don't know how long does it take to hit my goal. Like the hell, shake my head, it's a waste of time now. I'm finna give everyone ugly attitude. I don't care who you are. I don't want to hear no damn positive comments under my post. Keep your opinions to yourself because I don't care about what you have to say. It's crazy how people quick to cash at me, but as soon as I make GoFundMe account, people take forever to donate from my needs, which is strange, but it's whatever. Now I'm very annoyed. Can you maybe think about getting, you know, a job? And then yet again, people like that are why I'm so if you ever comes a GoFundMe. I feel like every week I'm saying a new GoFundMe for somebody who's obviously went for an awful accident. In the back of my head, I'm thinking, is that real or is that fake? Because I do know there are fake GoFundMe's, like they get shut down all the time. It's really big whenever there's like an awful disaster, like a terrorist attack or a shooting, especially in America. Because in the space of a day, all these GoFundMe's pop up saying that they're going to help the families involved and that they claim to know the families because they're family themselves, etc. But then they never are. And obviously, the company GoFundMe stops all that stuff and like freezes the money and like refunds everyone. However, I'm thinking the back of my head has anyone ever actually cashed it out and got a load of money off that scam and if we read this but again this is actually quite interesting it's crazy how people are quick to catch at me but as soon as I make a GoFundMe account people take forever to donate for my needs which is strange but it's whatever something tells me she begs a lot I'm getting the vibe that she messages everyone she knows asking for $20 because she's low in fuel but where's that money really going it's either going to fast food or cigarettes and booze hey man who just walked in owning that car Bad food. Come out of the stall and get out. Now. Oh god, he's got his gun out. Come out of here. Get out here now. Get out! Get your hands up. What did I do? I didn't do anything. I just want to pee. Wasn't you. 
That's why they told me you're driving that blue car, right? Yes. Okay, good. You are now detained. So I figured out exactly why, why you left from. Because you took off my traffic stop. What? While she didn't exactly try to hide it, the cop made sure to confirm she was the driver of the blue vehicle before officially detaining her. And now that he's got her cuffed, he's able to get to the bottom of exactly why she sped off and what she could be hiding from the cops. Let's go. No, you can even get. Well, she may be pushing go. something down the Let toilet and flushing it. Such an asshole. Let me go. So happens when you run from the police. Let me go. Come on. No. Stand right here. I didn't do Stand anything. Stand right here and separate your feet. Separate your feet. Separate your feet! I didn't do anything! This is just the start of the resistance from this woman, as she continues to beg the officer to release her. But this cop isn't making the same mistake twice. Just think of the abuse from his colleagues if he lets this woman escape again. So he radios for backup, and has a second officer keep an eye on her while he continues to try and identify her. Where's your ID? I don't no, What's your name? Jamie. Jamie what? Ranger. The only place you're going is to jail. I didn't do anything. Okay. I did not do anything. Okay. Please let me go. Is she innocent? Boo. You're not calling anybody. The only place that you're going to go is to the, the jail. You're going to go to jail for resisting arrest, eluding. I didn't all right. do anything. Yes, you did. I stopped you eight miles no, down the road. I, did not. I, did I not stopped do you eight miles down the road. You oh, pulled eight over miles. for me, and then you took off. No, I did not. Okay, I, I got to go talk Please, to the manager really quick. My the woman was identified as Jamie Granger, and the manager confirmed she was indeed the driver of the blue Hyundai. He also apologized for kicking in their now broken bathroom door. When he returned to Jamie and his colleague, she still hadn't given her identity over, despite having not stopped screaming since the officer left so he decided it was time to try and finally strike a deal and get some information out of her please please still no identity no that's fine if you work with me i'm gonna work with you let me call okay. my boyfriend please if i let you call your boyfriend you're gonna tell me who you are where's your phone yeah. it's <laughs> i think it's in my car right there where right, right the blue car right behind obviously right the blue car but where in the blue car and i don't know in the in the console i think okay so I noticed that while we were in the bathroom, that I smelled a faint odor of alcohol coming from you. Have you had anything Ooh. to drink today? A little bit. A little bit. Is that why you ran from me? No. Okay. No, I didn't so know the you were at the reason for the reason why I stopped you, okay, is because you were called in by several people, failing to maintain your lane and going head on with other cars. Okay. Yeah. Don't don't play games with me right now, okay? I'm not stupid. Stop please, treating me like I am, okay? When I turned boyfriend. around and put my lights on, okay? When boyfriend. I turned around to put my lights on, I saw you driving the car. When I got out of the truck and walked around, you decided to take off. No, oh, so I she, did not. yeah, no. ran yes, off. No, no, then what do you I call did it? not. Then what do you I call it? coming to this gas station. Negative. I swear, I did not know you were after me. To go into the that's toilet you, to flush something down the toilet. Hmm. That's why I stopped right behind no, you. I okay. It's starting to add it's up in my head now. It's not question that Jamie is lying through her teeth here, but at least... Okay, so that video obviously cut off. I think there is a lot more missing out of it. If I am correct, I think the original video was something like an hour long. Why not show a video of her actually fleeing from the stop? And this person said two minutes in is when she flees from the traffic stop. No high-speed pursuit. Pop just follows at a distance and sees a car at the gas station. I also think they were maybe looking for her for about an hour as well. You know, put it this way, if multiple people have called in the police because of your driving and then you get stopped and drive off, that's not good. And then yet again, if we talk about the whole going into the bathroom stall situation, something tells me she might have been flushing something down the toilet. If he can smell alcohol in her breath, is she maybe trying to hide something else? Why was the gun necessary? Why not let her finish peeing? American policing seems so needlessly aggressive. I mean, I kind of understand why he pulled the gun because, you know, in America, you don't know who's got a gun. You don't know the mental state of people. She could have had a gun in that bathroom from stall and shot him for it. That's the thing that happened, you know, she was basically hiding. And then, you know, her going into the toilet and sitting on it, you know, it makes you think, like, what was the real reason she was doing that? Was she actually peeing or was she trying to hide something? Well, anyways, guys, that is the end of the video. That is some entitlement. Obviously, we look at more entitled people and you definitely will. Chris Bigger, subscribe and see you all tomorrow for another video.